YouTube, welcome back to Super Lurcano World. Uh, I want to show off my second deck that I built, uh, you know, with proxy format, and second deck I built in real life, which is Maurice Item Draw Power Turbo, the deck. I like Maurice a lot. When I saw that card for the first time, I, I was like, cool, item draw payoff decks, that's really cool. There's a card like this in Magic the Gathering called Sram that I really like, when you play like an artifact and channel, or you draw a card. Uh, it's basically the same thing. And I like, you know, turbo draw strategies, as you guys might have told, might have been able to tell from my stitch deck profile, which is the last one. So I'm gonna show you guys um, my Maurice deck, the color I pair it with when we get to it, and why I think it might just be a top tier contender. It can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the better decks out there, like the stitch deck, like the Ruby Amethyst deck. It's just capable of throwing hands with those decks. And that's really important. So yeah. Uh, please like the video, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, how do you play your Maurice deck? Let me know. And as well, subscribe. Uh, at the time of recording this, we are very close with other subscribers. Maybe by the time we upload it, we'll be there. And if we are, that's awesome. But if not, uh, subscribe anyway. You know, and even if we are 1,000 subscribers, subscribe anyway. Got to keep growing this channel. We are the one-stop shop for everything we're common. That's it. All right, so we'll start with the main, uh, main person, which is Maurice. And we're playing four copies of it. Maurice here... Um, it's a six cost that can be used for ink, two seven quest for two. Uh, its ability when it quests lets you play an item, the first item after you quest for two cost less. So basically it's gonna be a free item, which is really cool. And then it's also ability it works is whenever you play an item, draw a card. So this deck has a lot of cheap item cards in it that will allow you to uh, at least keep turboing through your deck. That's really important. And now we'll just start going through the cards by play cost and for the Sapphire ink first. Uh, such as for a Scepter of Armandale, it has, uh, it's a one drop that can be used for ink item that has command, uh, you tap it, a chosen character gets support, and support is when that character quests, they give their attack to another character you control. Um, I like the card a lot. Support has really come up in testing to allow you to finish up, um, you know, people with magic numbers. It lets you hit characters with magic numbers. And they might see one of these on the board already and might play out cautiously, but maybe they only see one and then they start questing anyway. Then you play a second one and the support stacks and it's just very good, very good. Uh, we play then two copies of Magic Golden Flower. Now this is where like, I like to tell people that, you know, my deck is not the only way. Some people swear by four copies of this card. Um, you can banish it to heal three damage. And also can be used as ink, so that's really powerful. Uh, we, I play other healing cards in the deck, which is why I'm not super concerned about the Magic Golden Flower. But if you want to play four copies of it, you are more than welcome to. You can probably drop two scepters if you want to, or two other cards, doesn't really matter. But I found the Magic Golden Flower just wasn't as useful, so I cut down to two. But if you guys want to try it at four, I definitely suggest it, and I don't think you'd be wrong for trying it at four. The last one cost blue card, Sapphire card we play, are four copies of Develop Your Brain. It can be used as ink, and then you'll have the top two cards of your deck, add one to your hand, bomb back to the other one. The card's pretty strong, pretty gives you consistency, you love to see consistency. All right, on to two costs. We play four, one jump ahead, just lets you top with the top card of your deck in the ink while feast out. It's mana ramp, you love to see it. Then we're playing four copies of Grandma Tala. Grandma Tala here um, has an ability that when it's, the character is banished, you put it into your ink well. It is quest for one, and it's a one-one, so it's you know a pretty cheap body, honestly. But it'll quest until your opponent just deals with it. You can also suicide it into one of your opponent's characters just to help you with your mana. Uh, if you can get turn four Maurice on the board, you're in a really good position, and Grandma Tala can help you with that uh, should you need it. And then we are on uh, four copies of Coconut Basket. Uh, Coconut Basket is not a once per turn item, it's a two cost that says when you play a character, heal two damage. It's the reason that I don't really like the Golden Flower. Coconut Basket just does it. Uh, if you play two characters a turn, uh, it heals four damage. And if you have multiple baskets, they stack. So that's pretty powerful. And that's it for the two cost cards. We're going to go on to three cost cards next. Uh, we're playing four copy of Mickey Mouse Detective. Uh, Mickey Mouse Detective is uh, a card that costs three to play to one three that quest for one and when you play it you put the top card of your ink well face down and that's all it's used for that's it it's just ramp which is good ramp is good and then we're playing uh, four copies 
of Bell. Bell the Engineer. Bell the Engineer is a really, really cool card because it's a Mini Maurice. Mini Maurice as in when you want to quest with it, the next item you play is reduced by a cost of one. So I mean, it's not a two cost reduction. It's not as crazy as Maurice. You also don't get the draw. However, what you do get by playing this card is a card that quests for two. And like questing for two is good. Uh, it's If it honestly didn't quest for two exactly, I probably wouldn't play it. I'm gonna be real with you. I probably won't, wouldn't have the card in my deck. However, the fact that it quests for two is very, 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 very strong. Quest for one, very bad card. It's also a two, three. Uh, being two, three is kind of important because being two, three kind of lets you you know, kill some stuff. And who doesn't like killing stuff, right? We like to attack some stuff, we like to survive a little bit. There are two threes in the game that survive for um, a lot, like a little bit of time, right? Because they're two threes, it's kind of awkward in the early game. But anyway, it's there to help you play more items quicker. It really combos well with Maurice, because your first item costs three um, or less if you quest both of them. And there's only one item that costs three that we're playing that we're gonna get to shortly. But I really like Bells of Aura. I, I don't know why I'm rambling so long about the hell, uh, but I, I like it a lot. I like the card a whole lot. Then we're playing two copies of Fishbone Quill. This card is a mana ramp artifact item that costs three to play. It can be used as ink. You tap the card, you put any card from your hand into your ink well face down. It lets you put in cards that cannot be normally used as ink, which may or may not come up, uh, but it's there for a little bit of extra, extra acceleration if you need it. It's an item, so it gives you your Maurice payoff. And I think that's fine. On to the four costs. You play four copies of Ariel. Ariel is crazy in this deck. Absolutely nuts. Um, what Ariel does is whenever you play an item, you ready Ariel. It costs four to play, and it's a three through the cost for one. So you've got to request quite a few times, or what you can do is use it as a defensive threat that can clear multiple bodies if your opponent's just spending a bunch of stuff. You know, this deck. This, this aerial card really cleans up the stitch deck, you know what I mean? They might have a turn where they play three three dudes exerted because they need to. And they got aerial just sweeping them all up. And then you think to yourself, they one might think, okay, well, if they use aerial, you know, it's gonna die eventually. But then you just have coconuts on the board, you play some coconuts or a golden item flower or whatever, and then you heal the damage and you just keep going. So like, aerial's really strong. Aerial can clear board, it can quest for a lot, uh, it's a really good synergistic card in this deck. I like it a lot. Then we're on four copies of the OP Bell, the bell that everyone knows and loves. This bell is crazy. Costs four to play, can be used as ink. It's a two four that quests for one, but it quests for five if you control ten or more cards in your rank wall. It is your alternative win con, basically. When Maurice is drawing you a whole lot of cards, that's really nice, but it's not your win con. We have two win cons in the deck, and Bell is one of them. In addition to that, it's read a book ability says that you can do an additional ink per turn. That's pretty good. So it's mana ramp and to an extent, and also is just an end game quest for five, which can close out games pretty quickly. So I have four copies of it because it's broken. Down to the five costs, there's only one five cost card we play, and it's four copies of Let It Go. I'm a big proponent that every deck needs removal. Every deck needs some kind of removal. And I'm a very, very, very big fan of Let It Go. It's a five cost that can be used as ink, it can also be used for free because it's a song. So if you want to suspend something that costs five or more, it's a free removal. What this card does is it puts an opponent's character into the ink well. That's what it does. It's not like Dragonfire that blows it up, right? There are a lot of strategies in Lorcana that can add cards back to your hand from the discard. If your opponent plays those strategies, let it go kind of awkward, removal kind of awkward. But let it go, just sticks it in the ink which against some decks is actually really good. You know, I, in testing, for example, I play Stitch deck. Stitch deck, I have Party of Rolled in the hand, which says return a character from your discard to your hand. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, if Stitch dies, no problem, I'll go back to my hand. And then they let it go, and it's like, okay, I guess that card officially doesn't work for me anymore. And then it gets a whole lot less valuable, right? So I think let it go is super good, and uh, yeah, probably is a bit. Then the final character in Sapphire we play, two copies of Tamatoa. This is another end game win button. This eight cost big crab uh, cost is a five eight that quests for one usually, but quests for an additional one for every item you have in play. By the time you get Tamatoa in play, you'll have probably at least five items, if not more. 
So Tamatoa can sometimes quest for a lot, even more than what Valka quests for. And that's pretty crazy on its own. It also has a really good ability that when you um, play it or when you quest with it, you return an item card discard to hand. Now, the only item card that's disposable in this sense, unless they're playing item removal on you, is the Magic Golden Flower, the one that you banish to heal three damage. So you can constantly add that one back to your hand if you want. It's not really there for that, though. It's really there for the end of game, uh, quest for game type of situation. Tamato is really good. Now I'm ready to reveal to you the last 10 cards in the deck, the secondary ink, and this next item is going to reveal why I chose the Amethyst ink. Four copies of Ursula's Cauldron. Ursula's Cauldron is one hell of an item. It costs two to play, it can't be used as ink, but you can tap it once per turn, look at the top two cards of your deck, put one on top, put one on the bottom. Why is this card so important? It lets you control your draws with Maurice or anything else, Magic, Magic Mirror, whatever other draw cards you have. You can draw a card that you want to draw and bottom deck something that's not immediately useful to you. And you can just keep using cauldrons. They're not one, it's once per turn, but per copy. So you got multiple cauldrons, you can stagger them. Like activate a first cauldron, okay, play an item. Maurice draws a card, do your second cauldron, Whatever, look at the next two top two cards, and then do play another item where he draws that card. You know what I mean? The cauldrons are very good at controlling your draws in this deck. Plus it's an item, so we play four copies of it for it to get a payoff from Maurice. The card's pretty good. Uh, we are on two copies of Magic Mirror. I originally played this card as a four of, but there would be hands where I do multiple copies of it, and then I thought to myself, God, even after Mulligan, it's like, what do I do, right? So we're done with two copies of it, but it's a card that you play for two, and then you pay four and tap it to draw a card. It's there to help you kind of unbrick or draw more cards if you need to. By the time you get more recent on the board, you usually don't need Magic Mirror, but Magic Mirror is a nice card to have uh, to get you the additional cards sometimes. The last four cards in the deck are four copies of Pot of Greed. This card lets you draw two cards from your deck. Uh, it costs three usually, but if you sing with it with a three cost character or higher, it's free. You draw two cards. From the other side, it's a crazy, crazy card. And that is it. Uh, Maurice, a Sapphire Amethyst Maurice deck. I really like this version of Maurice. It really does it for me. I've tried other versions of Maurice and other versions have different benefits too. But the fact that you can play Amethyst cards and control your draws with the Cauldron is a very powerful thing. But what do you guys think of the deck? Let me know in the comments. I will see you later. Bye.